and corrupt politicians. Member of Parliament for Northwestern St. Anne, Dr. Dayton Campbell, lashed out at the practice condemning perceived wrongdoing in both political parties. He was speaking at a party meeting in St. Elizabeth this week. TVJ's Anthony Lugg has our story. Since the Petrojam affair, there have been claims and counterclaims about which political party is more corrupt. All eyes are on the leader of the JLP, though, given Andrew Holness's utterances about corruption. But at least one PNP member wants his party to clean up shop. Member of Parliament for Northwestern St. Anne, Dr. Dayton Campbell, made this pronouncement at a recent meeting. Given Andrew Holness's utterances about corruption. But at least one PNP member wants his party to clean up shop. Member of Parliament for Northwestern St. Anne, Dr. Dayton Campbell, made this pronouncement at a recent meeting. In recent weeks, the PNP has blasted the government for its handling of the issues at Petrojam. But for Dr. Campbell... Look here, corruption of the color. Corruption is not orange or green. Wrong is wrong. In no matter who I'm doing, wrong is wrong. The country cannot develop if you have politicians who come here and tell us the the PNP is getting set for what some expect would be a contentious vice presidency race. Nomination closed on Friday and the six candidates vying for the posts were announced. They are Mikhail Phillips, Philip Paulwell, Dr. Wickham McNeil, Damian Crawford, Dr. Fenton Ferguson and Dr. Angela Brown Burke. The party is also weeks away from its annual party conference. Make we draw the line in the sand. There is a consequence around doing other people who are not the PNP because they expected better. And that one set down on the corner of the criminal Anthony Log, TVJ News. We go to St. Thomas now, where former sugarcane workers continue to pressure the authorities for improvements to their living conditions. But as TVJ Shamela Mitchell reports, another promise has come from their member of parliament to address the issues once and for all. We have no job. We live in the poor life. See how we are like when we used to live down at the Golden Grove Barracks. Former occupants of the Golden Grove Barracks in St. Thomas, who were relocated to Golden Grove Meadows, continue to complain about several issues affecting them. I have a woman and my family, you know, and, and I look for me and give me two rooms where my daughter live. And I and my daughter live, I'm a woman, and I pity them. You understand? They say they can't afford to pay utilities as they're not earning enough. There, fixing people are there fixing the lawn, doing things. What you see seen here now, they would have known which house is theirs, but they're not in possession. He says he will be raising them again soon as the situation is becoming unbearable for these residents. We have had this matter before. We have had discussions about the light, the water. These are low income earners. Some have um, I've gotten the benefit of their house because they have been former sugar workers. They really don't have it. They're not getting pensions, some of them. Shamela Mitchell, TVJ News. A group of Caribbean law students are taking CARICOM to court, claiming discrimination and preferential treatment at Caribbean law schools. The matter is now before the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ. More on this report.
Not the first time concerns have been expressed about the process to become an attorney at law in the Caribbean. Essentially, one must first obtain an undergraduate law degree from the University of the West Indies and then complete vocational training at one of the regional law schools like Norman Manley Law School in Jamaica or Hugh Wooding Law School in Trinidad and Tobago. But the Association of Caribbean Students for Equal Access to the Legal Profession is contending that students of non-UWI law degrees have consistently been denied equal access to the regional law schools. They are mandated to sit an entrance exam, which the association argues is fraught with discriminatory practices, seemingly in contradiction of CARICOM's integration principles. The association's head, Jason Jones, is a UK Commonwealth scholar. He noted that in 2015, he, along with hundreds of other non-UWI law graduates, was denied entry. According to him, he's been making every effort to resolve the matter through meaningful dialogue with various stakeholders in CARICOM to no avail. And so the association is heading to the courts. Mr. Jones has initiated legal proceedings in the Caribbean Court of Justice, CCJ, against the Council for Legal Education, the Council for Human and Social Development, and the Council for Trade and Economic Development for the infringement of his rights as a national of Trinidad and Tobago to access vocational training in the region in order to become an attorney at law eligible to practice within CARICOM member states. The association has chapters in Jamaica, Antigua and Barbuda, Guyana and Barbados. Agriculture Minister Audley Shaw is lamenting the state of the local coffee industry, stating that something must be done. Speaking at the launch of Christmas in July at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel in St. Andrew this week, Mr. Shaw says the industry is being impacted by excessive imports. On my desk, right now, and I'm going to show it to the profit people that I'm meeting with, are permits requests for the importation of hundreds of boxes of coffee. Yet, yesterday I met with a small farmer group from the Blue Mountain region. Guess what? Their coffee is dropping off the trees. Local government minister Desmond McKenzie says the government continues to have challenges with illegal vending. Mr. McKenzie says the issue is not just confined to the corporate area but right across the island. We have to. And it is going to form a very critical part of advancing local government. We should never be afraid to take decisions, whether you become popular or unpopular, because at the end of the day is what you do and how you do it. He's urging political leaders to put colors aside and put the country first. But it's important that we become more informed about our failures to act and to act decisively on issues that affect us as a people. Residents in Lakovia, St. Elizabeth, are pleading to the government to fix the railing of the bridge that borders Middle Quarters and Santa Cruz. The residents say that they are fearful that if the railings on the bridge is not fixed urgently, it will cause a major problem. The bridge is very dangerous to both pedestrian and motor vehicle. So the, the, the rail them need to correct. The rail them and the bridge need to correct. And all at the side in there where breakdown need to correct on the bridge. That's right. very dangerous. We take a break now when we come back. News from overseas. Prime Time News brought to you by Big Deal Time. Every day, VIG.
accept debit and credit card payments anywhere, anytime with Swipe. The time by Swipe from Sajikor Bank is 712. I have a few words that are needed to think about when it comes to auto insurance.